God has been busy over the course of the last six days. He's made the heavens, the earth, the oceans, the sky, the night, day, and every living creation, crawling, walking, flying, and breathing. He looked around and he said, it is good. But the story isn't over. No, indeed, he left the best for last, the pinnacle of his creation, mankind. In this daily devotional today, there are three key points I'd like to talk about. Identity, partnership, and relationship and reconciliation. So, in a society where things are never good enough, society tell us we haven't got the right looks, we're not the right weight, we're not getting the right education, or even the right job, or even the right driving the right car, living in the right area. Well, actually, all that doesn't quite hold up in the lights of Genesis 1, 26 and 27, when God said, let us make mankind in, his, in our image, in our likeness. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. Our identity is not governed by our nationality, our race, our culture, even where we were born or where we live. Instead, our identity is that you and me are children of our Heavenly Father. Stop and think about that for a while. You know, it's an amazing thing. This is it. We were made in His image. And what does that mean? We should reflect His goodness, His creativity, His beauty, His kindness, His passion, His patience, His mystery. Indeed, in Psalm 139, verses 13 to 14, it says, For you created my innermost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So my identity is not how I look or what I do or how I'm perceived. Indeed, my identity is that I'm made in God's image. I am a child of God, just the same as you are. And as male and female, we were made to carry out God's purpose and plan. And he looked in around in verse 31, after he had made male and female, and he said, it was very good. The point two is on partnership. So what was God's purpose for us? He blessed the man and the woman, and he gave them dominion over all the earth, and care for his wonderful creation. So male and female working side by side, in partnership, interdependent, complementing one another's strengths, supporting one another in their weaknesses, and carrying out God's plan. So there was no hierarchy in God's perfect world. There was no male and female was made in his image to carry out his purpose jointly in partnership. In order to carry out this responsibility, we also need to care and nurture one another. Indeed, he commands us to multiply and be fruitful in all that we do and, and all that we are. And we have been charged with great responsibility to care, nurture and enjoy his beautiful creation. Equal partners in the service to our Father. And there's this bond between the first man and the first woman and God as he blesses them to carry out his plan and his purpose. Point three is on relationship and reconciliation. In chapter two of Genesis, we will read how sin entered, this, entered into this perfect relationship between male and female and our Heavenly Father. Sin severed what was once a perfect relationship. Sin comes in many forms, hate, anger, greed, selfishness, and sexual immorality. Mankind has fallen. We have failed our creator. We have failed to carry out his plan and his purpose. In today's world, there is immense deforestation, pollution, inequality and discrimination, armed conflict, abuse and domestic violence, and broken relationships between family and friends, between us and our Creator. It seems that we're on a path of self-destruction. 
Our Heavenly Father yearns to have a relationship with us, to reconcile us to him and bring us back to him. Well, how will that happen when we have sin in our lives and we fall short of God's glory? He has sent a rescuer, a redeemer in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in Jesus will be reconciled with our Heavenly Father. Okay, so where was Jesus when God was busy creating the earth and heavens, light and day, men and women? Look at Genesis 1.26, let us make mankind. Jesus was right there together with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, three in one, in perfect relationship and partnership with one another. This was further confirmed in John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things was made. Without him nothing was made that, were, that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. God's son Jesus took on all our sin, iniquities, and failings. These were all nailed on the cross with him when he was crucified. And when Jesus was resurrected on the third day, he defeated death and once again sits on the right hand side of his father, interceding for us, pleading our case for you and me. Don't make the mistake in thinking that your works alone will save you. It will not. So Genesis is essentially the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. And the whole Bible is essentially God's love story for us. Our Heavenly Father made all that was good and wonderful in the heavens and then on the earth, including you and me. Have you allowed sin to creep into your life? Does God seem far away today? So here's the good news. He wants to reconcile with you, to bring you back into the fold, his plan and for you and his purpose to know that you are so very loved as his son and his daughter. Allow Jesus into your heart and pray to God to forgive you through the blood of his son and sin no more. Let the peace of Christ that transcends all human understanding guard your hearts and mind through his son, Jesus Christ. God bless you and keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you so that you reflect his goodness, his kindness, his love and his light, working in harmony with one another.